So there's one about Turkmenistan, but I don't know about you guys. I don't think there's a lot of people watching from Turkmenistan. Yeah, finally Turkey. Or Turkey. Nah, fuck that. I, I like to call it Turkey. And like I said, it sort of reminds me about turkeys, which I like. Uh, let's see. When you Google Turkey, wait, when you Google image uh, turkeys, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. That's what happens when you Google Turkey. I only know it as Turkey, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, same. I only know it as Turkey. Turkey is the one and only name of their country. So you know what? Let's go, man. Peeps, Barb's here. And get your Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. So for this episode, you're going to notice that uh, there's going to be some continuity errors. For example, I'm clean shaven here. In the episode, I'm not. That's because uh, for this episode, I had to film out of sequence over the course of two weeks in five different countries. However, long story what? short, these days, I'm trying to kind of travel five to the last countries of our alphabet. And you know, I found a really good cheap flight ticket to Turkey. So uh, long story short, it kind of ended up going like this. Hey, mom. What? Want to go to Turkey? Turkey. What? Nice, nice food. Nice ancient ruins. I think that's Hagia Sophia. Istanbul. Yeah, I went to Turkey for this episode. It's time to learn geography. I, th I didn't, I didn't knew he was doing that. I think that's cool, but. Isn't like hard to like travel with the cameras and all sorts. I mean, I, I I can't travel with like my equipment. I don't know, man. But hey, good for him. All right, just like we did with the Toko episode, oh. here's another video shot on location. Here we are in Turkey. I'm gonna feature a lot of you guys, the Turkish geography peeps, in this video as well. Good. And who better you know, to like feature than my go-to Turk, Mr. Ege, aka Eggy Boy. Hell yeah, man. So I actually met Ege a few years ago when I did the heritage trip. We had an 18-hour layover in Istanbul. I was 14. Yeah, you were like 14. I don't usually meet up with kids unless they have, a, you know, an adult supervisor. You, I did. you had your aunt. I don't want to be the creepy guy that meets up with kids. You're like a chubby little kid, and now you're like a emo punk rock star. Look at you, man. You grew up. Skin Oh, thank you. Yeah. I promised him five years ago he could be in the turkey episode. You kept your promise. Kept my promise. You're the best man. Five years later. That was a bad That was the worst high five ever. Well, Ege drove me around parts of Turkey and helped with this video, so he's going to co-host. Also, you are officially the youngest person ever to co-host a Geography Now episode. Hey, man. So, I'm just 19. Yeah, there I you think, go. Well, Ege boy. Like, come on, bro. Like, you should have taken me to the Mexico episode. Come on, man. You ready to pop this turkey into the oven? Oh yeah, you're getting full meal with this episode. <laughs> full meal. I like I like the domain turkey that jokes. Turkey sits on today is riddled Appreciate with thousands that. of years of transition, and the map has changed a lot. Our land has always been the junction point between so many cultures, eras, and empires throughout history. Yeah. It would take way too long to explain. Yeah, the true. No, like the Anatolian Peninsula has always been like a very important region for like major major empires. It goes all the way back to somewhere around 10,000 BC in one of the oldest known towns on earth, Çatalhöyük, dating about 6200 BC. Çatalhöyük. And from there it was like the Bronze Age, the Hittites, the Phrygians, the Hittites, Persians, yeah. Greece, Romans, Byzantines, Seljuks, Ottomans. You guys remember the the uh, video of, of Kraut, the video that Kraut had on uh, Turkey? I still remember some of that stuff, you know, the Hittites. Uh, the, the Seljuk Turks, the Ottomans, of course, huge part of the Ottomans. The Republic that stands today. Lots of stuff. First, let's jump into Based the map and see Turk. what Turkey administers today. Turkey is a transcontinental country located right at what is considered the boundaries between Europe and Asia. The vast majority of the country lies on the Anatolian Peninsula, and Insula, yeah. between the Black Sea to the north, the Mediterranean to the south, and the Aegean to the west. This is considered the Asia part of Turkey. Like in antiquity, 95% it was of Asia it. Minor. As for the Europe part, we go to the Thrace Peninsula, which connects to the Balkans, separated by the Bosphorus Strait, the Sea of Marmara, and the Dardanelles up the Gallipoli Peninsula from the Asia part of the country. Gallipoli. The Thrace Peninsula only Don't makes tell up 3% of the country's Churchill. land mass, yet it holds about 10% of the country's population. The country's capital and second largest city is Ankara, also known as Angora in antiquity, and is located Angora. inland in the Anatolian Peninsula. The largest, busiest, world-renowned financial hub and only transcontinental city in the world, though, Istanbul. would be the city of Istanbul. Classified as a megacity, it straddles both the European and Asian sides of the country across the Bosphorus. In antiquity, it was also known as Lagos, Byzantium, and Constantinople until it changed its name. Oh, damn. Could you imagine like traveling to 
Istanbul and like start calling it like Constantinople, how do you think people would react? If you go to Turkey and start like saying, oh, welcome to Constantinople, do you think like people would get offended? That'd be an interesting experiment. I don't know. I would do it. I'd totally be like, yeah, I'm in Constantinople or Byzantium. That's actually pretty cool Istanbul, sounding too. Istanbul, of course, also hosts the busiest shipping port, the port of Haider Pasha, as well as the biggest and busiest airport, the newly finished Istanbul International, located on the north side of the city. If you flew to Istanbul newly prior to 2019, finished. you probably arrived in Ataturk International on the south side before they transferred all Whoa! passengers. Whoa! They actually named the airport, uh, you know, after the Ataturk. That's cool, though. I, I approve that. I appreciate that. If you don't know who Ataturk is, then go fuck yourself. Constantinople sounds cooler, though. Yeah. Their ...operations to the new airport and made Ataturk a cargo hub. Otherwise, the country is divided into 81 provinces, or vilayet. Off the western coast in the Aegean, you notice there's a lot of islands. However, interestingly enough, all but two of them actually belong to Greece. These yep. two right here. This was due to the Treaty of Athens in 1913, which clarified sovereignty over the Aegean. This yeah. has been a source of contention for maritime boundaries and access for Turkish ships trying to leave the west coast. And today, it's still a little complicated. Nonetheless, Turks come and visit these islands islands all the time it's not like there's a crazy conflict going on speaking of which there's another dispute yeah it's like a little Syria conflict right Hattai it's province. not that bad this was the last province to join the republic in 1939 oh Syria really never formally recognized the referendum that the french officiated that gave it to turkey and today syrian maps still show the hatai province as theirs also, oh like damn as of october for turkey the official annual inflation rate was 85 percent bro holy fuck I mean, and I'm thinking that here we have like 10% and that we're like, damn, that's a lot. 85 is a lot. Yeah, Turkey has an insane inflation. I, I hope they talk about it. Side note, we all know Turkey has a town named Batman <laughs> in which the mayor literally tried to sue the director. Director of Batman Begins. But Turkey also has huh. some funny literal translated names. Yeah. These, uh, here, why don't you just go through some of them? Balıkesir, Fish Prisoner. Adıyaman, its name is bad. That literally means its name its is bad. Its name yeah. is bad. Pokat, slap. It's, it just means slap. And the last and one. And Afyon Karesar, Opium Black Fortress. Opium Black Fortress. Opium yeah. Black it's Fortress. It's where opium grows. In any case, going back to history I though, like Istanbul was essentially the capital of the Byzantine Empire. If barbarians invaded from the Danube, Arabs came from the southeast, even some Slavs came in from the Black Sea coast. It was chaos everywhere. It wasn't until the 11th century you started to see fir the first Turkey. A lot of people wanted to take Constantinople back in the day, you know, like a lot. A very good time to visit Turkey. That is true, though. Very cheap uh, currency. Peoples fully settling in what is now Turkey, uh, starting with the Seljuk Empire. That's that's why he said he visited Turkey, right? Like he found the cheap flight and why there was a cheap flight, probably in part because of the currency. Although apparently due to recent uh, skirmishes between Turkey and Greece, Turkey had plans to invade the Greek islands. Holy shit. Could you imagine? Aren't that, uh, you know, that's like two NATO members. That'd be terrible. Which was actually proso turkic but you get the point. So American Petrodollar W. Oh, total W, dude. Osman I initiated the Ottoman Empire in the Bursa province area. You've probably heard of the Ottoman Empire. It lasted for about yep. 600 years until the Balkan Wars leading up to World War I, when all hell broke loose. The Treaty of Sev, which was signed and essentially attempted to carve out what Turkey, was left yeah. amongst the allies from the Turkey. Yeah, this was supposed to be like an international uh, area. This was like for Italy. Uh, to Italy also, Italy, France, but yeah, just a bunch yeah, totally of stuff. Peninsula. The thing is though, it's incredibly hard to carve out the heart and nucleus of an empire, aka the Anatolian Peninsula. Not easy. In comes Ataturk. This yes, sir! Modern Turkey who Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, I wonder what they are gonna Modern say about my man. But I hope they say good stuff about him. You know, I hope they talk... I hope they make him good because he is like the Turkish god. In comes Ataturk. This guy is basically the father of modern Turkey. Yep. He fought against partition forces and wanted to salvage the Anatolian Peninsula as a new Turkish Republic that would modernize, industrialize, and secularize, even though many secularize. people still maintain Islamic core values. This would essentially make them the first Muslim majority country to have secularism embedded in its constitution and a clause that stated that it could not be removed. And there have been five coups throughout history on the grounds that these principles were in danger. Anyway, back to the early 20th century, the mm -hmm. transition from the Ottoman times Editor. to the Republic Times was followed Boss. by lots of fighting, paranoia, proxy intervention, displacement practices, and bloodshed. We'll talk more about this later in the episode, but here's the deal. Whenever we make this bell sound, 
It means here are the Cliff Notes version of a hot button topic that we will not go too far into and you are welcome to discuss it in the comments. Obviously, we assume you will be writing civil words in lowercase letters. Of course. Of course. Until then, moving on. Okay, uh, what else do we have, Ege? Uh, well, Turkey joined NATO in 1952. It also invaded Northern Cyprus in 1974 yeah, what's up in retaliation with that? to Greece's coup. Also, the southeastern part of the country where the majority Kurdish population lives oh. is where the PKK... Uh... Yeah, I forgot, but there's really a lot of controversial stuff when it comes to, like, Turkey, right? Uh, think about the Kurds, the Armenian genocide, all the beef with Greece. Yeah, there's just a lot of tough stuff that's just gotta be really uncomfortable, even in my comments, maybe. I don't know. But hey, we're not here to judge. Uh, geez, it hasn't even been 10 seconds and already, like... Let's just move on. Yeah. In addition, Turkey has been one of the longest in limbo candidates for joining the EU. Anyway, it kind of went like this. Okay, Turkey, you've been a member of the Council of Europe. You're an associate of the ECC. And you have a customs union with us. Good, good, good. But there are 35 chapters of criteria of EU ascension. And how many have you completed? Uh, 16. Uh... Hey, I took in a lot of refugees. Doesn't that make me look a little bit better? I mean, I'm holding one right now. Yeah, but there's other... <laughs> Thing stuff that nah yeah we're suspending all negotiations until you figure it out ah yeah, screw it here's another yeah. we seriously need to move on from all this political talk yes. and discuss something else because the comments it's, it's, it's a lot fire. hey I know with all the history and unique regions Turkey hosts a lot of notable sites of interest to talk more on that here's one of our Turkish geographies to explain Merhaba hi guys my name is Janso and I would love to tell you about some of the wonderful she has also a bluish Turkey. eyes First off, or like are green obviously a land of history it's and interesting. there are hundreds of ancient sites that date back thousands of years remember the famous battle of Troy yep the ancient Troy is in Turkey and people from the movie actually left the Trojan horse in Çanakkale. Huh, in addition, look at that. we have the Mount Nemrut head statues, Cappadocia's cave houses, Mardin sandstone building, Myra's rock tombs. I mean, yeah, Turkey must be for us uh, history nerds. Uh, it must be pretty cool to go to Turkey, you know, like I I'm seeing these pictures and I'm like, damn, I want to go to Turkey, man. Speaking of crashing currencies, did you hear about uh, Paris overtaking London as the largest stock market in Europe? No, I did not hear that. And that is quite important though. Wow, Paris, congratulations to them. For the tomb of Saint that's, Nicholas, that's like a big AKA deal. Saint Nicholas. Yes, he was born in Turkey. We have old castles. Santa Claus in was Turkey, born in Turkey. In Ankara, Alanya, Bodrum, Giresun, okay, and the only that's a cool that fact though. You guys have Santa Claus. It's a huge part of our culture and it's kind of a Turkish traditional bachelor slash I've been to Turkey party. before, it's beautiful. Finally, so I'm plenty of Roman ruins. Ooh. Our most famous site in Istanbul and it is very close to Blue Mosque, which is another stunning piece of architecture. And last but not least, Let's not forget the Grand Bazaar. I bet. Yeah, I bet Turkey with all those ruins is beautiful. Oh. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, that was a lot of info and we barely even started the episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, tone things down a bit and go into the least crazy part of this episode. Let's show the natural side of Turkey, the land. The land. So Turkey's land will always find a way to shock you. <laughs> uh, one minute, you're, you're Why use your own monuments for tourism when you can just appropriate it from Greece and Rome? Damn. Sounds fairly controversial. I don't know. Would that be controversial in the comments? In the I don't forest, know. And the next I'm not going to say anything rock just rock in case. It's a lot. So much extreme terrain. Let's explain in the motion graphic. First of all, Turkey lies right at the convergence of the African, Eurasian, and Arabian plates. Wow, literally. At the North and East Anatolian fault lines. This essentially creates their own mini plate known as the Anatolian plate, which is technically being pushed counterclockwise as the Arabian plate pushes up and the African plate subducts under the Cyprus arc. This means Turkey huh. is subject to occasional earthquakes and has geothermal activity, although the majority of their volcanoes are dormant or extinct in activity. All these fault lines are what contribute for to 80% or so Sounds of the country nice. being mountainous, with three main ranges. Wow. The Pontic Mountains in the north, the Taurus Mountains in the south. In between both of these, you find the Anatolian Plateau. And finally, to the far east, you find the Aras Mountains. This is the highest region of Turkey with the highest peak, Mount Ogridog, or more commonly known as Ararat, which is actually Ogridagi? a compound volcano. From these mountains, the mighty rivers of Turkey it's flow, the longest 
interesting that it's very close to like the border with Iran. Or Red River, which empties into the Black Sea. It's also important to note that the source of the famous Euphrates and Tigris rivers are in Turkey as well. They flow down from the hmm. mountains and feed millions. Of interesting that they below. control also those in rivers. In the eastern area, you can find the largest lake of the country, Lake Van, in the eastern Armenian highlands as well. Basically, each of the regions oh has their own unique. He said Armenian and microclimate. The North Black Sea coast is the most lush with forests and receives the most rainfall. The Thracian Peninsula and Marmara regions are the flattest part of the country. The Aegean and southern coasts have a Mediterranean climate. The central Anatolian plateau is like the grain harvest belt of Turkey. The southeastern parts closer to Syria and Iraq are more dry and arid. And of course in the far east you find the tallest mountains and the coldest weather. Specifically the town of Erzurum which takes the title of the coldest place in Turkey. Also a side note remember our nice. are super Snow sensitive in Turkey. with uh, like that. Mount Ararat. It's like sacred to them and it's on like their coat of arms and they name out all of their commercial products after it. <laughs> Don't you live by a bunch of Armenians in Los Angeles? Yes, I do. How do you feel about uploading this video after you get back? Ah, uh, don't worry. It's it's LA Armenians. They're cool with me. Plus, they're like too busy with real estate and like rooftop graves. So anywha. There are so many other unique natural sites Turkey has locked away in their domain. Dude, Cappadocia is like a different planet. So many weird eroded formations. Now, this is usually the part where Noah comes in, but uh, obviously he's not in Turkey. So we're just going to take over his segment. Love you, Noah. Sorry, but we'll do your segment. So economically, Turkey is definitely a regional powerhouse classified as an emerging economy by the World Bank. They were co-founders of the OECD and are part of the G20. Nice. They're an upper middle income nation per Going capita. Down. Uh, by anyway, Going by down. Going down, yeah. <laughs> in fact, by market cap value, Enka, a construction firm, and Erdemir, a steel producer, usually rank in the top five largest companies in Turkey. Not far behind is Turkish Airlines, which has more international destinations than any other airline in the world. Wow. 130. Turkish yeah, Airlines. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, that is huge. Uh, Turkish Airlines is like one of the biggest airlines in the world. I imagine many of you guys have used Turkish Airlines before. Istanbul, the second biggest Actually, I think in the I've used Turkish Airlines. No, no, I have Every year they get closer and closer to dethroning Dubai. Yeah, no, 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 I'm fine. Yeah, no, I'm still the best ever, ever that's ever existed. Shut up! In any case, <laughs> Turkey is also a medical hotspot, specifically in the plastic and reconstructive surgery department. When walking plastic around Istanbul, surgery. don't be shocked if you, you find know? a lot of men with bandages around their heads. Oh, yeah. Turkey is the hair transplant capital of the world. And here's our Nice. A little we like more that, you know. Topic. Hey guys, so as you know... Me I'm not getting bald or anything, but if I wear... I would go to Turkey. Did you hear about the attack in Istanbul the other day? Six people were killed. I did not hear about that, which is a little weird, but I didn't knew that six people died. Jesus. Was it like a, what you would call a terrorist attack or just like a normal attack? I'm interested in no more. We spend a lot of time in Turkey. So we had an idea and we did a thing. We created a five-star VIP medical tourism service called Beauty Mill, where we provide hair transplants and over 70 other cosmetic procedures with our doctors in Turkey. Yeah, it's a really cool experience. I was actually one of those guys. I actually had hair transplants. Ah, really? You guys are weird to talk about it, but I actually did get it done. I was very happy with it. Check it out. Link in description. Aw, oh, art being so transparent. We love it. Shut up. Yeah, we only promote businesses on these country episodes if the business is affiliated with the country or if it is from a small business from a subscriber so that you can support Yeah, I saw them. a anyway, video from thank you, ATR. Art. Turkey is also a world-renowned huh. mineral and agriculture powerhouse. Today, they are the leaders in producing things like boron, pumice, feldspar. I don't even know what feldspar is. Apricots, cherries, figs, and the national pride crop hazelnuts. Yeah, they say we're going to eat boron. Yeah, terror attack. The suspect left a bomb on the floor before it went off. Maybe we can check some of that uh, after the video ends. Be interesting to, it's interesting to know nice more. Product placement. Some of this agricultural production, though, has led to the overusage of underwater aquifer sources, which have led to massive sinkholes speckled throughout the interior of the country. The Konya province alone has over 300 of them, ranging in just... 300 of them? Damn. How do you feel, bro, when you, you could be, like, at your home and, like, one of these fucking sinkholes just appears? That's fucking scary dude i want imagine just like camping in the middle of this field or this field right and you just like the whole like the earth just consumes itself that's 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 scary yeah that's not a good really 200 yeah, I don't really know. cool on the way to alanya and another thing you can <laughs> find in the environment are animals and gary harlow obviously is not with us in turkey so so uh caleb has a baby and he has baby oh thank god so, i fucking uh, hate uh, that guy 
doing it. Let's just get it over with. No turkeys do not come from Turkey. The American <laughs> turkey got its name from Turkey because the European settlers thought it looked like a guinea fowl from Turkey. So they called it a turkey fowl, later shortened it to just turkey. turkey. And that's how we got turkey. Don't ask any more <laughs> questions, all right? Nice. Turkey used to be one of the only few places that had both <laughs> tigers around and lions around at the same time until they became locally extinct or permanently migrated out. Now, Turkey is the land of the cats. And it's estimated that Istanbul alone has over 200,000 stray cats. They are treated nicely by the locals who feed and tend to them. This is why you will never see either mice, really? rats, cockroaches. In yep, tea. those cats keep them clean. Uh, a Katal Huyuk has existed as a settlement for 9,000 years. That's as old as the Pyramid of Giza. And the Pyramid of Giza is to... Oh, that, okay. That's as old as the Pyramid of Giza as the Pyramid of Giza is to us. Wow, that's an interesting fact, though. Nine thousand years—that's in the major cities in Turkey. Why the bit of time? Cats. And if you're caught harming any of these stray cats, the community, oh brother, whipping down. They love stray cats so much that they actually immortalized the beloved Tombili, the chill cat. Tombili after she passed away in 2016. So sad. Nonetheless, the despite cat. having a love of cats, the national animal is actually the gray wolf. There's a saying to describe the Turkish soul: Yes, a lion or a tiger may be stronger but you'll never see a wolf in a circus. Think about it, just think about it. So that's all the time we have for me and this hat. I guess I gotta give it back. I just, I'll, you know, I guess I'll just kind of give it back. I, thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you, fake Gary Harlow. And with that in mind, let's discuss- I like animals. him better. I like that guy better than- Turks are heavy meat eaters. Sorry, vegans. Which of course means we will now discuss the food of Turkey. Ooh. We're talking about the home of uh, Cezan Ebrakay. That guy is insane. This have is gonna you be seen good. the size of the platters that guy makes? Well, we don't have him with us right now, but we do have you guys, the Turkish geography peeps, to explain a little Come bit more on. the food and cuisine. Show me Turkey. some hey, food. Oh. I'm Rabia. Hey everyone, it's Furkan. And I'm going to tell you a bit about the food of Turkey. Much better than Gary Harlow. Oh yeah, dude, so much better. And talking about so much better, I think I'm in love. Not to be weird or anything, but she's really beautiful. So Turkish cuisine is based on a fusion of all the surrounding cultures. They were in contact so, like, with Arab, Western. Persian, you find hints Greek. Of flavors and ingredients from Mediterranean, Central Asia, Caucasus, and the Middle East. Fun fact: Swedish meatballs is actually originated from here. King no, no, Swedish Swedish meatballs are actually from Turkey. Ah, oh, damn! I just said something about Swedish meat meatballs in like one of my recent videos. Ah. Uh, I'm um, Gary Harlow. Oh God, I hate that. I hate the the, the fake accent. You know, Jesus. Ah, oh, thank God he's not there. Was on exile and brought back the recipe for köfte from Ottoman Empire. Also, keep in mind we love putting yogurt on everything, especially if it's seasoned with things like garlic and mint. Actually, it's not yogurt. It's yogurt. Iskandar, oh shit! That's actually how we pronounce it in Spanish. In Spanish, you say yogurt. That's the the word in Spanish. So maybe we got that in common. I don't know, but it sounds pretty nice. Injikbiri, çaputaş pilavı, mantı, çiğ köfte. Sarma, kuru fasulye, kısır, kokoreç, menemen, işkembe çorbası. And of course, the most famous dishes you probably heard of already: döner and kebab. Keep in mind, you might have seen restaurants called Donar Kebab. There's no such thing. There are two separate items. Donar, which is cooked on a turning spit, and Kebab, which is cooked on a skewer. This is the best part. We have a lot of desserts too. Turkish Delight, Lokum. Ooh, yeah, I've heard about those candies. I've seen it in movies and whatnot, and it looks delicious. Plus, I was going to say about this thing right here. Restaurants called Donar Kebab. There's no such thing. There are two separate items. Donar, which is... The doner, like a lot of Mexican tacos, like for example, let me, let me show you. Like, yeah, exactly. Do you see this? Like, this is how we uh, prepare our tacos. I don't know if you can see that. Like, this is how us in Mexico prepare our tacos. You know, I mean, it's... It's literally the exact same thing. It's the same thing. And even the, the pineapple on top, it's like they also put stuff on top. So that's crazy, dude. Like who copied who? And I think I know the answer. And it's unfortunately us. 
Uh, Turkish food is so good. It looks delicious, man. And kebab, which is cooked on a skewer. I've never one. tasted we a kebab in my life. Desserts too. Turkish delight, local, which is quite famous, I guess. Kadayıf. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Ice cream, the first guy who's turned this thing. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I want to experience that. It literally means a bomb. In market, you might find Ottoman margin candy. Also, ooh. we have many drinks as well. For one, we are the highest consumers of tea. Nice. Of I love tea. In the world. And just like other nations in the Balkans, we love drinking our iron. We love drinking iron. We also have things like sherbet, salep, boza, shalgam, and rakı. And of course, if you have the chance, try some Turkish coffee. Thank you. Yeah, Turkish coffee. <laughs> Coffee is not oh, about man. the type of bean they use, but rather the way it's prepared. They will boil water in a jezva, yes, jezva with incredibly fine ground coffee, almost to the point where it's wow. like powder, and then they serve it. I'm with walking the home as no I listen to this. Sometimes we even do this thing where we <laughs> Damn, heat up bro, the pot safe. and heat a sand pit so the coffee is actually baked, not boiled. <laughs> British tradition: getting a kebab at one in the morning while drunk. I definitely have to experience that at least once in my life. And I guess that's how in America, like it's the exact same tradition, but with tacos, you also do it with a kebab in the United Kingdom. So that's also, interesting. Also, I learned this the first time I met Ege. After you finish drinking your coffee, you can tell your fortune. They like lift Same in Germany. And then nice. The coffee grinds and you like come up with a fortune. Uh, there's even an app for that, I think. Like they check the coffee grinds? Yeah, I think so. You can like scan it. Yeah, that's the other thing I noticed. Turkish people have a lot of superstitions and rituals that they kind of live by. Yeah, that's a whole another story. We'll talk more about that in the next segment. The... the demographics, right? So, what is a Turk? This is not a simple wow. question to answer, especially since... Tur uh, highest tea drinkers per capita in the world. They drink 50% more tea than the United Kingdom itself. Wow. There we go. Turkey. Turkey has gone through so much change in the past several millennia. First, we need to make the quick distinction Turk between the against terms Turkic. Turk and Turkic. Yeah, this Turk is important. Turk or Turkish are used to interchangeably to refer to someone from Turkey. Turkic refers to the Turkic the ethnic diaspora, group, yeah. broken down into six main branches that extend all the way from Turkey to Siberia. This means, yes, Turkish people are distant cousins of people like Siberians, Kazakhs, Uyghurs, Uzbeks, Tatars, and so on. Ethnographers speculate that they are even Uralic? intertwined with Uralic and Ugric people groups. Wait, so even were related to them by weird technical long distance default kind of yes yeah. and even victor orban says that they're related to the turks <laughs> so there's something going on wow. that being said many turks it's an Tur interesting thing for orban to say especially considering the context turkish apple tea is good Apple tea. I've never had that. Ooh, but that sounds delicious, man. Today are probably a genetic ah. admixture of who I'm knows like what salivating. from what anywhere and everywhere that got in contact with the Anatolian Peninsula over the past two millennia. You can find everything from blonde-haired, blue-eyed Turks to yes, even a small community of Afro-Turks. In any case, if you want an actual visual of how nice. the country breaks down ethnically, yeah, that's what I was wondering, and it it is something that I even like right now. I have a little bit of a question, like, why are there so many like? white Turks, you know, <laughs> like a lot of them are white. I mean, even this guy it's look, like looks fairly white. So I don't know. It, I mean, I know it's kind of like a very dumb American-like question, but it's just interesting, like so many. And I guess that's, you know, like, for example, the people that did the Crusades and maybe stayed near the Anatolian Peninsula, uh, the, the you know, the Vikings or Normans that uh, settled uh, in the Anatolian Peninsula. I have no clue. But there's a lot of them, you know, apparently. Uh, here's the, the demographics graph. First of all, the country has a population of about 85 million people and is host to the wow. largest refugee population on Earth. Now, here's where yeah. things get a little complicated because Turkey doesn't really have super reliable data on ethnic statistics of their country. And the term Turk is defined by the Constitution as anyone that is bound to the Turkish state through citizenship, which means any citizen is yeah, considered Turk. a Turk regardless yeah. of ethnic background. It is also known that there are about 50 non-Turkish ethnic groups represented in the country. Nonetheless, independent sociologists have speculated that somewhere around 70 to 80 percent of the country would most likely identify ethnic as turks. ethnic turks to whatever degree you have that the may kurds be. and the there, arabs the largest minority group are kurds estimated to be anywhere from 12 up to 20 ish maybe percent of the country from there the remainder of the population are other ethnic groups mostly arabs armenians greeks assyrians circassians bosniaks Roma, also yeah so there's also on. like we greeks use the turkish lira as Turkey. a currency we use the type cnf plug out list and we drive on the right side of the road speaking of driving uh, i learned that pretty much everybody outside of istanbul hates the license 
plate number 34. Yes, we do. Every province has a number, and uh, 34 is Istanbul. And mine is 39. You have it on your <laughs> chest. Yes. 39. Uh, and people usually keep crowbars in their cars in, in, in any case. A fight in case know? of a fight breaks yeah. out you guys have weapons in your cars yes. wow they have crowbars in their cars you know just because you know if someone is speeding next to you well you know give it a good beating you know beat the crap out of them many people from greece and bulgaria and bosnia converted to islam during the ottoman era when the ottomans lost these peoples left for turkey that's that, that makes sense though that that makes a lot of sense language wise obviously turkish is the official language turkey. It is the latin script it was actually adopted in 1928 replacing a modified arabic script yeah. prior to that our ancestors actually used our own yeah that's actually pretty nice we, yeah, we i learned all of that in the in the crowds video if you haven't seen that go check it out because we learned a shit ton about turkey uh, we, there's old uh, Gokturk language. Visions of the old Gokturk and Uyghur alphabet, Gokturk. which had these cool jagged blade shaped letters that would later inspire the old Hungarian alphabet. Man, I guess we do have some weird connection to you guys. Huh. Now, going back huh. to the people of Turkey, as we mentioned, Turkey is also pretty diverse. As mentioned, the Kurds are the largest minority, mostly concentrated in the oh, southeastern damn. provinces, bordering oh, damn. Iraq and Syria. We already did a video explaining about the Kurds and who they are, but basically, they are a stateless, ironic group of people related to the Persians. I remember that, yeah. They speak their own language, completely <laughs> Love that. Turkish, video, and they are spread across four countries in the Middle East, mostly Iran? in Turkey, though. And since we're already on the topic, uh, let's just get it over with and rip oh, off the Armenian no. Band -Aid thing. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. During the transition years of becoming a republic, there were lots of fighting, and the Armenians, being assisted by Russians, was heavily involved. Since then, uh, Armenia yikes. requested the Turkish government acknowledge the incident. I don't even want to listen to this. Whereas Turkey's government, to some extent, will acknowledge that yeah, tragedies come on, have just, occurred. However, just the narrative over is with, more bro. nuanced, and they would not use the word genocide. This is the yeah, basic yeah, foundation. Yeah, genocide. Blah blah blah, blah yeah. Armenia. Schools, the incident is taught Jesus as Christ! This is this some is Ottoman painful. Who abuse their power and this is painful to watch, and I'm not even listening. Mind, this is the official Turkish government story. So make, make up your own mind. Make up your own mind. Own this is what the Turkish government says. Yes. Yeah, Talk about ding, it in ding, the comments. Ding 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 yeah, ding, ding, course, ding, though, ding 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 ding. Fuck. Personal level, Turks often can be just befriend people like Armenians, Kurds, and Greeks. It's not like they're like oh when they meet each other. It's like they can interact with each other. That's true though. That's true. They probably. We have don't that footage. Hate Mike was really each other. Cool. Mike, we, we were really uh, Armenian uh, Greek. You know, hitting it off. You were vibing, man. Yeah. You're, like you a guys, lot of things are in common. You use like the same words. You like yeah. have the same everything. Like we're, yeah, like, we're basically from Thrace, both of us. Three same people. It's like it's like one people. It's crazy. And another thing, being close to conflict zones, Turkey has become the largest refugee host in the world with about three yep. million, including nearly sixty-five percent of the entire world's registered Syrian refugees. Wow. Supposedly the number sixty-five percent. A lot of people also take that. Like, Germany, Jesus, 65%. I mean, how do, how do they even handle that? register so it's 100 percent higher than that well with that let's talk about another part of turkey's identity religion although secular by Islam. constitution according to the government's yes. old registration system, remember the ad percent of the country claims to be muslim to whatever degree of actual devotion the majority at about 75 percent being sunni affiliated with the hanafi school of jurisprudence uh well in the past people were 98 percent do you guys think that's true like 95 percent of them sorry 98 percent of them are religious I don't know. I mean, people in the comments can uh, talk more about this, but 98%, that sounds like a lot of people. Uh, I don't know. I, I think there would be more atheists in the country of Ataturk, right? But hey. Uh, supposed to have a registration for their religion. And if they had just one Muslim parent, they would be automatically registered as Muslim. The data is probably a little bit skewed. For what it's worth, historically, yeah. before Ottoman times, the lands Turkey lied in used to be very... Ah, uh, okay. Well, sorry, man. He says that people used to be automatically registered as Muslim. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Like literally Sorry half about that. in the New Testament of the Bible that the Apostle Paul visited refer to current renamed cities of Turkey like Ephesus, Tarsus, Lycia. Even the ecumenical patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Church is located in Istanbul. It's interesting though because despite the Islamic undertones, yeah. Turkey and often their Turkic cousins can be very superstitious <laughs> and fall into practices like fortune telling and astrology. It's even. huge out here. Yeah. So like technically Bruh. considered haram but like you guys still do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing you'll notice. So, in Turkey, there's wait, always... hold up. Is it, it, it's haram, but people still do it. What? And, and, and plus, it's like super stupid because it's astrology.
kind of like a di Come dichotomy on, or fusion between the Islamic side and the Turkic side of people's identity. And that's the other thing too, like a lot of times people kind of conflate you guys with Arabs because oh, Turks Islam are not Arabs. Is tied in with Arabism so much. Yeah, we're like, like the least Arabized Muslim majority country. But like people don't seem to understand that. <laughs> yeah. And one thing they've upheld for thousands of years are I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing to complain about. Uh, you know, why do they make it such a big deal that they are not Arabs, you know, or that they are not Arabized? Sounds a little strange. Fun fact, before the Ottomans conquered Egypt and Iraq uh, in the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire had more Christians in it. A lot of Turks also drink alcohol in Germany, but pork is a no-no. Yeah, like what the fuck with that, bro? Yeah, let me, let me get fucking wasted, but I'm not gonna eat pork. Islam made astrology haram. Maybe it's not so bad after all. <laughs> True that. I'm starting to like Islam. Their recreational activities. With that, here's art with the sports part. I had to write something. All right, guys. Turkey and sports. But first, guess what? Tarch's yeah, name is actually that. Turkish, and it means cinnamon. That's all we need you for, buddy. So, uh... Yeah. He didn't die, don't worry. First off, they have lots of native sports. Every year on the West Coast, uh, I, I, don't, I don't like sports. Camel Wrestling Festival. In which Yo, wait. Would... I think I might regret that comment. Camel Wrestling. Holy shit. Just imagine seeing a pair of camels wrestling. Okay, you know what? I think I might like this part. Naturally fight each other for mates. So they decided to make it a sport. That's what they fight for, uh, mating. They're heavily monitored by referees and are muzzled so they don't bite. Referees? Sport, There's referees is, and all. Horseback javelin throwing sport. So here's a clip from the movie Bayaz Melik showing how it's done in a safe and cinematically choreographed manner. And finally, you've probably heard of this one. Turkish oil wrestling. This is nope. most famous in the Thrace region, done on a grass field wearing heavy water buffalo pants. You have to either expose your opponent's belly upwards, make them fall to the side, or carry them for a few steps. They're covered in olive oil to make grappling difficult, meaning wrestlers of different weights can wrestle fairly using speed and technique while also repelling mosquitoes. Why'd you say uh, that as a question? <laughs> because why are mosquitoes important, right? We're saying what the olive oil is for. It's, it's to repel mosquitoes. It's nice. That too. Take out the mosquitoes, bro. Shut up, Imagine a ripped camel, though. That, that is so funny, dude. Most of the Turkish people I know in the UK drink and party hard. Yeah, like, what the fuck's up with that, dude? They party, they do astrology. Like, <laughs> Islam be like, what? Pretty well in many other contemporary sports. They've gathered over 100 medals in the Olympics since debuting in 1908. Their strongest event being wrestling, with a total of 29, 29. golds as of 2020 Tokyo yeah. Olympics. Turkey's I guess that oil teams wrestling. have won numerous European championship titles and medals. And of course, Turks will tell you so much about their accomplishments in soccer or football. These three teams are the most attention-grabbing clubs in the entire country. When there is a dirt between them the fans go crazy people get violent i mean does turkey has a lot of accomplishment in soccer really i mean they're not even the world cup so i don't know man i don't know about and that police have to be present to stop the fans from stabbing each other otherwise <laughs> they were super pumped when they reached third place in the 2002 world cup and this guy hassan sakur holds the record for fastest goal in the world cup i mean there's so much to discuss about turkish football but you know i'm gonna let you guys hash it out in the comments you guys can call each other little bitches and you can verbally assault each other all right guys that's all i got little for you for bitches. the turkey episode if you guys are interested in getting some cosmetic work done you can visit us at beauty travel in Turkey. Yeah. That was the lamest, like, most tame exit you've ever had, Art. Screw you, Paul. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Art. <laughs> Have people died at these soccer fights? Is there a, actually a plan for a specific real-life lore video? Not a specific one, so, you know, if you want to recommend one, absolutely, I'll take it. I'm American, and I think it should be called football here. I know, right? That's something, yeah. I don't like soccer, you know? It's like why not call it football? What should American football be called then? Golden Toaster. Oh, good question though. Holy fuck. Next year on 29th of October will be the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Turkish Republic. That's going to be lead. They're probably going to do something. You know, maybe we can live stream it. Many might, might have. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's possible. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, that's another thing about your culture. And to talk a little bit more about that, here's Random Hannah. And I'm not even sure if she can do this segment, but let's find out. <laughs> Hannah's 
busy. Uh, she's in Alabama doing Alabama stuff. So uh, we got Hannah too. Uh, her stunt double. Oh no, God. it's just me, Gabriel, Gab. Barb's is really pulling me into this episode. Really getting all he can out of me. So Turkish culture, what is it exactly? Turks are obsessed with hygiene. You're often going to find them with handkerchiefs or mendel. And every Turk has a bottle of Colonia. It's like a perfume that they pour on their hands to cool down or if they're just generally stressed. It actually does. I like that. I like that. From Germany. When greeting elders, what they'll do is they'll grab the hand and they'll kind of kiss it. And then they'll put it on the forehead. And then when men greet each other, they shake hands. A boosh. A little concussion there and a little concussion there. Oh, they also do the side hug thing. More my style. Boom. To the left. Boom. To the right. There are... <laughs> A lot of superstitions in Turkey. The most famous one that everybody knows of is American the football. The evil eye. The concept, it exists in other countries, but it is huge in Turkey. It's basically the idea of getting bad luck because someone else is jealous of you. This is why you're going to see the Nazar porcelain glass amulet. It's I've seen that, Sometimes yeah. Sometimes people will take it, they'll put it on things that people will get jealous of. Or they'll even put it on people too. Anything. You know what? The rituals are just too too crazy for me to explain. Here's some of the subscribers who could do a much better job than me. So, we Turks have a lot of quirks. Yeah, again, it's interesting that they have a lot of like superstitions though. When uh, they follow Islam. So, I, I don't know, you know. She has blue eyes, by the way. So, again, interesting. Uh, as always like the imperial system, the British came up with soccer and we adopted it and never moved on from it. Isn't like, don't the British call it football? Like the British also call it soccer? I didn't knew that. I thought that the British called it football, but maybe you're right. Yeah. Let's do this thing where they grab their earlobe, make a kiss sound and knock the wood. It is believed that eating of the right hand means getting unexpected money from somewhere. Cutting your nails at night are seen as things which would attract bad luck. Don't lend a sharp object to people. Either spit on it or else you could be in a fight. Don't eat in a bathroom or bed or you will get haunted. I was scared. Really? What? I love eating in my bed. So they used to call it soccer, but then they began using football. Oh, okay, got it. Was a kid. You should enter the house and use household with your right foot. If someone is taking a long trip with their car, people generally pour water behind them. If you buy a new pair of shoes, you should let the first person who noticed them step on them. Turks have this gesture. Wait, they what? When they I should step on my own shoes. Jesus, no thanks. I'm good. Get scared. They bite their thumb and push it up. Slippers cannot be upside down at all. When you drop bread on the floor you have to kiss it and put it on your forehead three times don't have too much fun <laughs> don't laugh too much or something bad could happen i especially like that one oh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck and they truly yo they truly have a lot of serp superstitions that was hardcore could you react to epic history uh, uh history of russia it's about an hour long so perhaps for another stream Part five is late 19th uh, century of the world. So much better to watch. Uh, yeah, sure, I could do it. Oh, yeah, you wanted to do it? Yeah, I'll actually do a stream about it. Let me. In fact, I'm going to do a note about it. Bro, try to make friends with the Germans. It's like how the Germans adopted Christianity and added some of their own traditions. Yeah. Epic. History expected to be the next stream about uh, the history of Russia. That's going to be cool, though. It's going to be fun. Especially because I don't know much about Russia. We did. <laughs> As Turkey has a world renowned entertainment industry. Even people in Brazil love Turkish. Drama. Yeah, this is so true. My mom loves Turkish soap operas. She loves it. She watched uh, like uh, like a full on uh season of one about uh, Soleimani, the Sultan, uh, Sultan Soleimani, the Magnificent. And oh boy, it was long. It was like 80 episodes or 100 episodes. So yeah, long story short, my mom loves Turkish soap operas. It's interesting because we are in Mexico. We are very far from Turkey. We have our own soap operas, but she absolutely does love it. I don't know. 
probably the most famous drama abroad being this one, which translates to what is Fatma Gul's wrongdoing? What would you do, Fatma Gul? I want to know. Fatma also, Gul. Turkish movies are really popular as well. However, Turkish humor is so specific that it's almost impossible to translate the inside joke, like the cult classic movie Gora. And it's highly regarded. It's as a cool classic. What the fuck? Yeah, it's basically about a Turkish scam artist fellow who gets abducted yeah. by uh, some extraterrestrials. And then the whole movie's. Favorite pastime of all moms is to watch Hour of Dramas. <laughs> the Anglo-Saxons converted to Christianity, but uh, kept all the pagan traditions. They were just merged with Christianity. Oh, okay. In front of Hollywood from the Turkish it looks like the oh, Matrix wait, guy. These are home to many festivals and celebrations. This rock festival actually got canceled this year. The district administration said it was too loud and too disturbing for the locals. But are those the real reasons? Oh, we're just never going to know. And speaking yeah. of loud and disturbing, here's our favorite. Florida man Keith Ew. Did you guys miss me? Yes oh, sir doing well. It's Keith Let's get to it I'm Keith It's great I'm supposed to talk about music Uh well this is an intense one Because you know uh, They have a lot of history I mean who doesn't know The Ottoman Empire And you know woo, You know stuff similar to <laughs> no. Greek, Arab, Romanian uh, Armenian Turkish music Hmm I wonder why. There are three main styles of folk. The Black Sea, the West Coast, and the South Coast all have their own different styles of folk music. On the Black Sea Coast, the Kemenche is played, and when they dance, there's a lot of shoulder shaking. Yeah, gesture, they're like, like, like fucking killing the West Coast, it. You know, if someone throws that move in the club, like, be careful. They're gonna steal your girlfriend. Shoulder shaking? Yeah. Gesture Just like gonna... this. In the West Coast, there's the uh, Zay back dance jumbush i'm sorry if i just absolutely butchered that um it's like a banjo without frets um, i don't know if it's tuned in fifths or not i potentially tuned in fifths in the south you i have no idea what Aramis he's talking about music it's slower and more depressing like super depressing people literally will commit self-harm at some of these concerts that are performed by this dude in fact, the 80s was kind of like the super popular depressing era of music in Turkey. It was kind of like their goth phase. You have all these really great artists that will be listed over here. Turkey has a lot of traditional bards, like these guys. Now let's get into some of the modern stuff that goes on in Turkey now. Anatolia Rock, this is probably one of the most famous contemporary... Anatolian Rock? It's like a All right. of like Western Rock. I dig it. And like Saz instruments oftentimes are remixed with traditional Turkish songs. And there's so much we could have mentioned like Turkish pop and there's a lot of Turkish rap and so forth. But if you have something oh. to add... Interesting. My best friend is half Turkish, half English. He's got a Turkish name... And his Turkish family call him and an English. Oh, okay. He has a Turkish and an English name. And of course, the English call him by his English name. Please That's interesting, though. In the comment section down below. I'd love to respond to you guys. Thank you so much to everybody that subscribed to my YouTube the channel. The Keith Everett, Everett Show. Show. It's been really great. Y'all have a good one. Whee! Thank you, Keith. So, by the way, if you want to hear a legend. A metal chorus, what an absolute emo legend! In Turkish language, <laughs> Turkish emo metal. Chorus. Yeah, check out my uh, musical project called "As My Life Falls Apart." It's on all platforms. You can find the music everywhere. It okay, you know what? Kind of good. I'm surprised. Uh, musical project called "As My Life." I like this guy. He has a Los Pollos Hermanos shirt. This guy likes Breaking Bad. All right, I, 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 I liked him. I respect that. He likes Breaking Bad. Falls apart. It's on all platforms. You can find the music if you haven't, everywhere. If that, you haven't seen Breaking Bad, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Go watch Breaking Bad. Actually sounds kind of good. I'm surprised. You, thank you. You do like all the tracks and the layers. And you, these kids are actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, promotion for you, Ege. Thank you, man. You are in this episode, so yeah, why not? Well, with that, there is only one part left to this complicated nation of Turkey. Their diplomacy. The friend go. zone. Oh, boy. <laughs> So this could be a bit controversial. Turkey is in a position where they can't really isolate, even if they tried. There's geographically too much going on. Let's explain. For one, Indonesia has always been a close ally dating back huh. centuries when the Ottomans supported the people of Aceh against the Portuguese. Since the Cold War, the USA has always been involved in Turkey's diplomatic uh -oh, affairs, especially yeah. in concern to Soviet expansion. They joined NATO in 1952, recognized Israel in 1948, many oh, Turkish Jews voluntarily nice. moved to Israel as well during Zionist movement times, and Turkey even sent troops to fight alongside the Korean War. 
In fact, Turkey has had close ties to South Korea dating over 2,000 years when the Guk Turks teamed up and assisted the Korean Goguryeo Kingdom against the Tang Dynasty Chinese forces in conflict times. Nice. Since then, they've maintained a historical okay, alliance based wow. on economic, cultural, and military traits all the way up to the Korean War. Today, about 460 fallen Turkish soldiers are buried in honor at the Hero Cemetery in Busan. Bosniaks from Bosnia and Herzegovina are also huge fans. They are kind of like the descendants of European Muslims that converted during Ottoman times. Many have even moved to Turkey as well and started business and have communities. Then we get to their Central Asian cousins. Turks have a platonic love for their Central Asian cousins. Uh, is there any pre-Columbian names used in Mexico or is it totally influenced by the Spanish past? No, uh, there are some names and I'm going to name a couple of uh, uh, actors. For example, if you've seen like the new movie, uh, the new Marvel movie, Wakanda Forever, the actor is Mexican and his name is like Tenoch or something like that. He has, uh, that's a, a pre-Columbian name, that's an indigenous name. Uh, also, uh, if you saw like the Doctor Strange movie, the girl, uh, it's called Xochitl Gomez. Uh, her first name is Xochitl, that's also uh, 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 like, a, like an indigenous based name or a pre-Columbian name. So yeah, some people use it, but it's rare. It's, it's like rare, it's like a rare thing, you know? like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan, and so on. They'll Sir always Majan, take up the what about them? To follow up and chat. Turkmenistan is a little bit of a different story due to their government's isolationist policies. But as people, the Turkmens and Turks are probably the closest in Central Asia because yeah. of the Oguz tribe affiliation. Germany is their largest import and export. And there's partner, a lot of Turks in Germany, Turkish so diaspora outside of Turkey. So there has always been a connection between them. Turks tend to have strong opinions about the Turkish diaspora in Germany, but that's a whole other story. Oh, that really? We do not want to get into right now. In regards to Why not. What could the Turkish people inside Turkey say about the Turkish diaspora in Germany? Like, what's wrong with it? Not just the America. So many Filipinos have Spanish last names. That is also true, my friend. Obviously, we already explained in the Cyprus episode. The yeah. northern Turkish populated part is a self-proclaimed independent nation that only Turkey recognizes. So, of course, there is a close connection there. Turks tend to call northern Cyprus Yavru Vatan, which means little homeland. But keep in mind, Yavru Vatan. Turks don't actually really Holy like shit. Friends. When it yeah. comes to their best friends, however, every Turk I've talked to has said one country, Azerbaijan. Oh. They have a phrase, one nation, <laughs> two states. If the Central Asian... No, of course it was not Greece, okay? That was a joke. But yeah, Azerbaijan, that's nice. I imagined it. So that's why when he didn't mention it, when he was talking about the Central Asia and the Caucasus, I was like, huh, I don't know. He didn't mention Greece and Armenia, though. So I, I think that's good. People joke that the Turks in Germany are more proud to be Turkish than the Turks from Turkey. <laughs> nice. I get that. That also happens with uh, Mexicans inside Mexico and Mexicans in the United States sometimes. Turkic nations are cousins, then the Turks and Azerbaijanis are Yo, bro. They Hi, mutually sis. intelligible dialects, they intermarry a lot, each is super welcome in each other's country. Overall, they are one blood, always have been, always will nice. be. Nice. All right, and in conclusion, Ege, you are the Turk, you get the honor, speak from the heart. Go! It's so complicated, it has a history going back millennia. Just like the land, it has blended people from the Aegean, Mediterranean, Mesopotamian, Europe, and Middle East, ancient Turkics. Uh, it's tech but also has a Muslim undertone. The politics are always insane. There is never a quiet moment, and no matter how many crowbars you get in the face from road rage, we always dish it out over a tulip glass of tea. I think that nice. uh, summarizes it great, Ege. Thank you so much for That's being a great in summary. the Turkey you, episode. And uh, stay tuned, Turkmenistan is coming up next. And he already did the Turkmenistan episode. Well, that was something I love to learn about Turkey or Turkey, as I like to call it. A Mexican Spanish is heavily influenced by uh, the Southern Spanish dialects. That's true, because most of the Spanish who settled in Mexico were from Southern Spain. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Most of the Spaniards that came to Mexico came from Southern Spain. So the dialect, uh, you know, it's actually kind of similar to the one in Andalusia, which is like the Southern state or province of Spain. And a lot of people trace their ancestry back to Andalusia or Southern Spain in general. Well, that was fun, guys. I really actually had a, a lot of fun in this episode. It was pretty interesting. There was no uh, th that Harlow guy. There was no like that, the Hannah girl. So no annoyances, all right? No one was annoying this episode. Even like the guest, I think was pretty chill guy, you know? So, hey. I think I enjoyed it, and I think you guys enjoyed it too. We had some good talk. 